Um, thank you. I do have uh, an agenda very quickly. I'll go through the first couple of items there on, um, on the board background and process schedule, and then I'll share the time here uh, in front of the audience with uh, Ernie Martinez and, and Kay Shelton for the rest of the, the presentation. So the purpose of today's meeting is, as uh, Carlos had mentioned, is really to, to let you know where we are in the process with D2, uh, get some uh, feedback from you on some of the ideas that we have. You can see a lot of the boards. Uh, we will uh, put the boards back up after the presentation uh, so that you can come back up and take a look at them a little bit closer. All these boards are in the presentation and we'll be posting the, posting the presentation online. Uh, after our uh, present after our uh, meetings uh, today so um, we're outlined the the recent activities we'll go through your comments and then uh, let you know how you can stay involved in the process so very quickly our background it's more of a reminder on the first few slides that's what I I get to to share with you today is really this is a, a core capacity project so we do have a capacity issue downtown we're all lines come through uh, the downtown mall right now. Uh, there's an operations map that we have here that you can take a look at as well. Uh, it'll help with operational flexibility by adding a second alignment in downtown Dallas. Uh, so if there is an issue in the existing mall, we'll be able to, to split the service uh, and uh, provide those uh, continued um, operations that we need to move people around the entire system, not just through downtown. We'll also enhance our mobility and access, and then there is an economic development component of this project as well uh, for downtown Dallas and, and the rest of the system. We have a long and distinguished history with the D2 project, and it has changed a few times uh, over the years. Most recently uh, in 2016, where we had identified a, a young alignment, which was mostly at grade, uh, through our public involvement process, and uh, conversations with um, many stakeholders in downtown Dallas and the city council, uh, it was determined that the, the aggregate alignment wasn't uh, preferred for the project and uh, we were directed to find another option. We took about 10 to 11 months to, to figure out what that option was, which was most of 2017, and identified the D2 uh, subway alignment. You can see the maps throughout the room. I'll go through. Um, actually, Ernie will go through the alignment here in momentarily, but we are at, a, at a, an alignment now that we're focusing on, uh, mostly subway, uh, between the, the two portal areas, which is in the, the downtown area where uh, we do have a subway and three subway stations. So Ernie will go through that here in just a few moments, uh, a little bit more detail on where this alignment is. As far as uh, process funding, we are working through a, a Federal Transit Administration project development process. Uh, as you might have heard, we currently are not in the FTA project development process, but that doesn't slow us down and that doesn't um, really uh, deter us from continuing this project. Uh, the FTA had asked us to, to resubmit uh, into uh, engineering. We need to gain a little bit more uh, information on the D2 subway project is which what we're doing. And uh, so that's a good reminder for everybody. Um, so uh, including myself. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I already did it. Okay. Um, and so um, we are working through the, the FTA process. And um, um, really what it was, FTA has a, a, a two-year um, guideline rule. Uh, for, uh, for project development, we were outside of that. They didn't want to grant us another two years, so they asked us to uh, go back, get some more information, and uh, re-enter into engineering. So what we're doing here is this project development process, then we'll get into engineering, and then uh, in the next uh, two years, work on a full funding uh, grant agreement. Within project development, we do have um, some um, uh, milestones that we have. Uh, focusing on one of those is getting preliminary engineering at 30%. Uh, we knew, do need to complete an environmental document within this time frame as well. Uh, as they say, and I don't know if Kay will say this, but there's not a whole lot of bugs and bunny issues in downtown. So there's a lot more traffic, historic 
those types of issues, and she'll go into that um, uh, in her uh, part of the presentation. And then why is project development important? It really establishes a budget for the federal grant, uh, identifies what the, the project impacts and mitigations are, uh, and what our commitments are to uh, the public, and then it refines the uh, project that can then get into the engineering and construction phase. I mentioned we're, we're focusing on a, <clears throat> an FTA project development. Um, we were, um, we are looking at uh, a uh, capital investment grant uh, of core capacity, about 50% of the project cost. Uh, right now, the estimated budget, uh, what's in the financial plan for the project is $1.4 billion. It is a subway, so it's gonna cost a little bit of money to uh, dig a hole in a few stations in downtown Dallas. So. Uh, $1.4 billion is our estimate right now. And FTA is our current lead for the project. Some of the public involvement efforts that we've um, been going through most recently and, and really have carried over from our previous effort uh, um, a few years ago is uh, broken up here into to three distinct groups, which is a policy and management, public and stakeholders, and then our technical guidance uh, all of this information gets fed back into the DART Board of Directors um, through the federal staff, federal, federal Transit Administration, hears about this on a, on a monthly basis, and then the City Council as we get scheduled on their uh, mobility uh, committee meetings. So there's a lot of um, interaction between the public, uh, public meetings like this, focus area meetings, stakeholder meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings. So, uh, if you can't get a hold of us, it's usually because we're in a meeting somewhere talking about the D2 project. Uh, but we'll be assured we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, as far as the schedule, there are some milestones on the, uh, the planning side that we've identified where uh, you can see the numbers up there um, behind me, the maybe kind of small, uh, the one, two, three, and four, uh, where at the bottom of the schedule identifies what those key milestones are for each of the um, those um, meetings, it's 10%, 20%, 30% design. Basically what that does for us is it identifies a refinement in the um, engineering alignment and our progress towards our environmental document. So you can see, um, if you read some of the items down the, the left side there of the schedule, some of the, the big points are um, the, uh, the level of design that we'll be continuing through uh, 2018 and 2019 uh, in that time frame we'll be um, preparing and writing the environmental document at which point we would like to have a, a final environmental impact statement in the, um, the first uh, quarter or so of 2020 uh, where we can then hand that over to our capital design construction group so that they can uh, finish off the engineering and uh, actually construct this so we have revenue service in 2024. So that's a brief, quick, high-level overview of uh, the background and where we are. I'm going to turn it over to Ernie so he can go through some of the, the alignment, and then uh, next we'll go through uh, the environmental after that. So, Ernie. I'm going to go at this a little slower than I normally do because we're in project development and we're going to be asking folks for input about some project specifics, or at least what we know to date. Uh, I'm going to provide a little more detail as we, as we go through the process. The three elements that we're covering today of project development are preliminary engineering, environmental, and urban design. I'm going to be presenting on preliminary engineering, and in summary, what PE, preliminary engineering, is, is uh, the f element of the project where you obtain data about the alignment, whether it's subsurface, for example, utility information, soil, soil conditions, building foundations, but also survey information about what's at street level, all to gather information so that you know what the parameters, how much room you have to work with uh, so that you can design your alignment, not just horizontally, but also vertically, since we are going underground subway, uh, we need to know what the height depth is of some of these uh, utilities and foundations. So 
all, all again to design the helps us to design the alignment, the stations, and as we're going through this, we're adhering to design standards. And if you have really good vision, you'll be able to see some notations about some of the some of the turning radiuses uh, on some of these images. As we're going through this, we're also determining whether what are, what other needs we have to incorporate into our project. Like, are there any street modifications that we we need to make? Are there any is there any property uh, that we'll need to purchase as part of this project? I'm going to start off with a description of the project over on the northwest uh, northwest end of uh, the alignment. So what we're looking at here is, uh, actually I'll just use the mouse here. See, see that? We are peeling off from the existing line that we run, the green and orange line, just south of the Victory Station. Uh, as we peel off, we actually uh, are now on a 35-foot strip of DART-owned property. Uh, it winds through, winds through Victory Park. We're at street level here, and you can see that we'd have some street at-grade crossings with Victory, Victory Avenue, and Houston Street, winding winding our way past apartment buildings, residential buildings, hotels, and then of course the Perot Museum. We are just west of the Perot Museum, located right here. Uh, we are establishing the first station, which is an at-grade station or street level. Uh, one of our goals, and I know is a goal of some of our team members, is here to establish a station that is uh, coordinated with not just existing but planned development in the area so that we fit in with the, the urban fabric. Uh, as we cross under the Woodall Rogers Freeway, and I said we go under because at this section, uh, Woodall Rogers is elevated. Uh, we are crossing at street level across the the frontage roads, which are known as uh, Broom and McKinney. So we are under the under the freeway, going through what, if you're familiar with the area, we're going through a uh, surface parking lot. Uh, as soon as we cross Woodall, we begin our descent. So we're starting to go down into the into the tunnel. We're at street level at the freeway and we're starting to go down. That transition area between when you're completely at grade and when you're underground is, we refer to it as a, as a portal. So that area is bounded by these blue lines that you can see here. So the portal is approximately, depends on the separation of the tracks, but anywhere from 40 to 60 feet wide and in the neighborhood of 600 feet long. And uh, won't ask you to break out of scale, but that's what we're looking at uh, roughly here. Uh, so we are in this vicinity, we are near the Dallas World Aquarium. We just passed the Perot Museum, just to orient you with uh, where we are. Um, we are at underground at this point. What you'll notice is that there is some orange shading. Uh, the, the shading is intended to delineate where we are in a situation that we refer to as cut and cover. That is, at, at a later date, it will be uh, un completely underground, but during construction, it will be open. Uh, so a passerby might see, be able to look down uh, into the construction area for a very short period of time as we get into Griffin Street because Griffin Street and some others like Commerce are uh, fairly major arterials that we need to have active and uh, continue moving traffic through there. So what we're uh, hoping to do is to deck over as soon as we open up the hole, shortly thereafter, deck over so that we can continue moving traffic uh, through the area. Uh, as we get further south along Griffin, uh, we establish our second station, but our first subway station that we refer to as Metro Center. Um, Metro Center is located in the vicinity of Bank of America Plaza, uh, Crown, Crown Plaza Hotel, Homewood Suites, and the West End Hotel, just to, just to orient you. We also have our West Transfer Center located right here, and you may not be able to notice it here, but we're actually about equidistant from the, the Ackard station, and the West End station is just off the map there. So we have pretty good uh, opportunity there for transferring to multiple uh, modes there. We continue south on Griffin. Uh, no longer are we in the cut and cover uh, situation here. Uh, we are now turning east on Commerce, and to do that, uh, we need to 
go under because we can't make a sharp right like automobiles can. We are going under the below, below Garden there and we continue east on Commerce where we established two blocks east of Griffin, we're establishing our first, or our, excuse me, our second subway station. So somewhere between Ackard and Irve Streets. We are in the vicinity of the AT&T complex on the south side of the street. And there's also the Adolphus and Magnolia hotels directly across. And then Neiman Marcus is just off the, off the map here. Uh, we continue east on Commerce till such time as we reach the Main Street Garden. At that point, we start to turn in a northeasterly direction. Um, it is also the point where we have now begun our ascent. We are starting to climb. Uh, I didn't mention, but the Commerce Street station is about 60 feet below ground to the point where the CBDE station now, because we've begun to rise, is about 40 feet uh, below ground level. So we're coming up. We are directly under, in this scenario, and currently, as uh, we are um, investigating, we are under the, the Elm Street Garage, if you're familiar with that, just a block east of the Majestic Theater. As Soon as we leave that station, and I guess before I'll, I'll leave there, I'll just mention some of the attractions in the area. We have UNT, I uh, mentioned the Majestic Theater, we have the Indigo Hotel, and of course the Main Street Garden. Uh, we, Again, leave in the northeasterly direction. Uh, we are going through or under some surface parking lots. We are, our goal is to line up with Swiss Avenue approximately, and that'll show up in the next, in the next image. Uh, but what we're doing here is angling our way that way, uh, but within proximity of the East Transfer Center. Uh, as with the other one, we were near the West Transfer Center. Uh, this proximity will allow us to have good transfers between those two uh, facilities. Also, again, trying to minimize uh, disruption to any of the other facilities like the, like the Carpenter Park here. Again, the goal is to move as far south uh, on the alignment as, as we can. And then as we cross into Deep Ellum, uh, we go, we are again resurfacing um, and we begin our portal just west of the freeway, so under 345, IH 345. So we're rising, we're rising, and here's Swiss Avenue, just to orient you. We come to street level be well before we get to Deep Ellum. Uh, we then have the ability, we are establishing a Y junction here so that we have the ability to uh, turn trains uh, south so they can continue out into the Deep Ellum, Fair Park, uh, Pleasant Grove area. And, and then also have the ability to turn north up so that the, for example, Orange Lines, Orange Lines service could continue up the North Central Corridor. One other notation I'll make here about the Deep Bellum area and specifically Good Latimer. Uh, if you go out there today, you'll see that the, the tracks are within the median of the street. But under this scenario, the current thinking is that we would establish the tracks on the west side to minimize disruption to, to traffic. Here's just another scenario where we completely avoid the East Transfer Center and the, the Carpenter Park, and it's a, a south, south of Swiss Avenue. We're looking for a scenario where we, again, minimize the, minimize the impacts to the adjacent properties. That's all I have, and I'm going to hand it over to Kay, who will take you through environmental. All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to talk a little bit about the environmental impact statement that we're going to be preparing, um, as well as some of the urban design efforts that we've had um, ongoing recently with some focus um, groups. Um, the environmental impact statement, if some of you might recall, you know, Chad mentioned this has been going on for several years, and we actually issued a draft environmental impact statement back in 2010 where there were several alternatives for um, D2 in that, and Commerce Alternative was actually one of the alternatives we looked at back in 2010. So what we're going to be doing, um, we've worked with the Federal Transit Administration, is prepare what we call a supplemental draft EIS, and that's going to update all the information because it is several years old, and look at what some of the new impacts might be, especially on either end of the project, because we have changed the alignment slightly um, on either end from what was in the original EIS. Um, the EIS itself looks at a lot of different categories, um, 
and ranging from the bugs and bunny type issues like Chad mentioned that we're not gonna have a lot of to real estate acquisition, to traffic and transportation, to safety, um, geology, which is gonna be important for this project. It also gets into construction impacts. And so understanding the approach to construction for this project is important for that document because we wanna make sure we understand what's important to keep open, what access needs to be maintained, and how to minimize those impacts um, during the construction phase. Um, just wanted to highlight a few categories that are important in downtown. So cultural and historic resources, there are a lot of, of these in the downtown area. Um, since we're in a subway for most of the project, we're not going to be disrupting a lot of those on the surface level, but there is um, the potential for basements um, or underground parts of historic buildings along the Commerce, Cor Commerce Corridor to be impacted, especially during construction, um, because there could be some vibration effects um, from equipment that's being used. So we'll take a close look at that and looking at those buildings along the corridor. But we've established a study area for historic properties, 300 feet um, around the alignment and 600 feet around stations, because as you looked at some of these boards, there are some potential portal locations to get into the subway stations that could be a block or two away potentially. So we want to expand that, that area. So we're starting the survey right now. Um, we've identified a few that we know of that are well known to everybody. Lizard Lounge over there along Swiss, Swiss Avenue, the Stadler Hotel, Magnolia Building, Crown Plaza Hotel um, is actually considered potentially historic um, with the, the age cut off. Um, so we'll be looking at resources like that too that are actually probably built in the 70s. So it's hard to believe those are actually historic, potentially. Um, Parklands is another um, key issue for the EIS, um, most notably because um, number one on the map that you see and number four on the map, um, we go underneath both of those parks. So we've started conversations with the city parks department about what kind of easements or agreements we might need for that but we should not be affecting surface levels um, of those um, facilities. And then number five is Carpenter Park, which is getting ready to undergo a whole renovation. And um, we're working with them as well. The goal is to minimize impacts to that property. And if we do disrupt the very southern part, we would obviously mitigate to return it back to its um, condition. And you know, one thing that a lot of people have said is that this project is an opportunity to perhaps activate some of the parks or plazas in the area. So when I talk about urban design in the next few slides, some of the portal locations and access points to get to the stations could be integrated or adjacent to um, parks or plazas in downtown. Um, noise and vibration is another issue, um, whether it's residential buildings or hotels or, or parks. So we have a process that we go through. Um, this outlines it. There's also a board on it, but we're in the process right now, and I think we just completed several noise measurements, primarily along the at-grade sections of the alignment to establish what the existing conditions are. We've also done some vibration testing in coordination with um, boring that we've done at what 120 feet down um, into the ground to understand what the propensity is for vibration effects through the soils in downtown. So we're starting to document a lot of that. And once we start overlaying the project operations into that model, we'll be able to see where noise impacts might be. Um, and this just gives you an idea of what the measurements um, are that we've done through downtown. And as I mentioned, they're primarily in the at-grade sections. And then we did one vibration test in the middle of downtown near a boring at the, near the Commerce Station site, which is where a lot of those historic um, buildings are in that corridor as well. Um, transportation and access is gonna be another um, significant area of the EIS, and it will be its own chapter in the document. Um, because of the potential impacts um, on either end and where portals are, and there could be access changes, circulation changes, parking impacts, um, so we do mitigate for parking impacts. Um, if you have other ideas as you look at these maps on issues that you th think might be important for the EIS, we want to make sure we get those captured in your comment cards today, or you can always email the project um, d2 at dart.org and provide input that way. Um, construction considerations I mentioned, that will be a, a pretty large section in the EIS as well. And it will talk about where we're going to have staging areas downtown. And they might be temporary uses of property in downtown, or it could be areas that we already own um, that are near where we might have to launch a, a tunnel boring machine, for example. 
We'll also look at things like hauling routes because you're gonna be hauling out a lot of dirt um, for the project. And so we obviously don't want trucks hauling dirt um, through the residential areas of downtown or, or where there's narrow streets. So we'll have to work with the city carefully on the best routes to get trucks to the freeway system as soon as possible and not disrupt. Um, a few slides on urban design, and this was added um, as part of the project scope because um, this is a, was an important um, comment that we got last round, is that urban design is, is something that we should take a harder look at, and the city of Dallas actually has urban design guidelines that we're gonna incorporate into the project. So this is really something that can help um, encourage ridership, um, maximize the purpose of the subway, enhance downtown, help create long-term val value, and it's an opportunity for us to generate ideas to help us integrate D2 into downtown as best that we can. Um, I mentioned urban transit design guidelines. These were approved by the Dallas City Council last year. I'm not gonna read all of it, but these are actually on the city's website, and so we'll be looking at things like pedestrian friendly, accessibility, street level activation, sustainability, high quality materials, um, economic development potential. So all of that's kind of in the back of our mind as we're going through some of the urban design planning for the project. Um, we recently held in August um, five different small group meetings with focus areas along the alignment. You'll see seven on here, but we ended up combining one, two, and three to cover the Victory Perot area, and then um, had one for four, five, six, and seven. And those are the boards here that we have, and I'll run through those maps real quickly, but I think you might get a better, you know, be able to see it a little bit better up close um, on the board. But this gave us an opportunity to, one, start working with the stakeholders in the area about what the overall urban design vision is, um, for the area, not just related to the DART project, but just overall, there might be other changes that we don't have control over, but maybe the city or tech stop might be able to help with. So at the Victory Perot Museum focus area, for example, this is where the portal is and where the, the uh, Perot Museum station is. And what we heard from the group there, you know, there were some noise concerns where the, where the alignment curves. Maintaining service access, you can see there in yellow as number five. Um, incorporating the station into the, the future museum expansion. And then you'll see some lines on there too. The green dotted lines are uh, seen as important pedestrian connections. So um, number four, and I think I can use this laser. Um, this right here along the portal was an important north-south connection to put some um, pedestrian connections there and also along Woodall Rogers to get people up into Clyde Warren Park. So trying to establish the overall, um, the overall idea for this area. Um, at Metro Center, we used a little bit of a different map because we wanted to focus on the subway stations on where potential access points might be for riders that were gonna come down um, into the station. So on here, you can see numbers one through five and the orange um, little stars next to them. And those are five potential access points to get in down, down into the station. So number one, um, is at our West Transfer Center area. There's a, a possibility to maybe improve that transit center, incorporate um, an access point there. Right across the street, next to Fox 4 News, um, there's a parking lot there. Um, there might be an opportunity for something there so you don't have to cross um, the street, Griffin Street. You can pop up on either side of Griffin Street and get to where you need to go. Um, and that could be incorporated into future development there someday. Number three is, um, Rosa Parks Plaza. Um, number four is a sunken plaza near the Westin Hotel. I think it's part of the Westin Hotel, but you can see that picture um, on the screen, number four. There's an opportunity to maybe rethink and activate that space and connect it to the street um, and maybe just create more of a place there that's accessible um, for everybody. And then another spot there was number five, just south of Bank America Tower. Um, and it's a parking lot right now, but again, that could be something that's integrated into future development, or even if the portal were to come first there, at least it could be integrated into something later at some point. Um, at Commerce Street, um, one of the suggestions at this uh, meeting was to actually slide the station a little bit further to the um, east 
to allow it to basically be in the middle of Ackard and Hervé because the group saw those as the strongest north-south pedestrian connections to get to the government district, city hall area, as well as to the north. Um, so you'll see some spots there. Um, down on the bottom, you'll see numbers two and three, and that's a poss possibility to incorporate access into the Pegasus Plaza area. Um, number two is actually a, a, a car park area for um, Magnolia Hotel, but there's an opportunity to maybe change that into a, a pass-through connection and incorporate a pedestrian portal to the subway there, or, or actually in Pegasus Plaza behind the hotel. Browder Street Mall, where at and is doing a lot of work near there, um, that would be a good spot. Um, and then also there's a parking garage, number six over there off to the side of the map is a parking garage and it does have some opportunity for ground level retail. It could be a storefront type entrance incorporated in, into that garage. And then behind that, further down airbase, so you do have kind of a visual connection to the city hall area and farmer's market, you could incorporate something into a new development or the parking lot a little bit further to the south. Um, CBD East focus area. Um, the East Transfer Center here, uh, John Carpenter Park, um, an opportunity for something up in that area near that transit center or future redevelopment on that transit center site. Um, there's some um, open space and um, properties along Elm Street, numbers um, two and two that you see there along Elm. And then number one, actually helping to activate and connect right into Main Street Garden as an option. And you'll see the, the green line there on the map too for the um, pedestrian connection linking this CBD East area back over towards um, Deep Ellum. As Ernie mentioned, the Deep Ellum station um, goes away as part of this proposal. So creating the connections from the CBD East station to Baylor and, and with Deep Ellum in the middle along Swiss, there's a real opportunity there to increase connectivity. And so this map um, captures a lot of that. Those green dotted lines are really where we could put those strong pedestrian connections and you'll see Swiss as a spine there um, and also along Pacific and Gaston. Um, Baylor was part of this conversation, so from a construction standpoint, they're real interested in keeping Pacific and Gaston open as much as possible and minimizing closures. Um, keeping Cesar Chavez connection up to 75. The portal is right in that location, but we need to keep that, that street access open. And you'll see several possibilities for um, station access points that we showed on the other, on the other map. And then uh, Good Latimer, you can see here, and Ernie mentioned that as well, rebuilding Good Latimer. And we talked a lot about an opportunity there to make that a more pedestrian-friendly street and make it more of a complete street working with the city of Dallas. Um, so the last two slides, and then we'll open it up for questions, and Chad and Ernie will come back up, or just how to stay involved and how to provide your input. So we mentioned we have a website for the project. We have a project email, so anytime you know, now's the time to get ideas out there and comments on what we have here today. So we'd encourage you to email us or leave a comment card today. You can sign up for alerts on the website too. Um, so anytime, anytime something new gets posted, you'll get an alert for that. And we're more than happy to come brief um, your organization um, downtown. <laughs>